Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My interest in government began at an early age in grade school. I studied government in college, and after law school, I was hired and worked in county government, first as a lawyer and then as a department head. In 1983, I was elected to Whitehall Borough Council, and after 10 years, I ran successfully for mayor. And I have held that position for 23 years. My experience, my education, and many years as an elected official have led me to believe that a great deal about local government. I believe that local government is a, uh, can, I believe that local government is a uh, model, functional model for, for state government. It's also a laboratory for uh, individuals to learn about our American political system. Today I will share with you my, why I believe that uh, local government provides some of the answers for solving the problems with our state and federal government today. Let's begin. The government is the people. When you learn about democracy in, in school, it's very theoretical, and it's hard to connect the, the national government with the people who elect the president and members of council, but members of Congress. But in, in local government, it's different. Municipalities are smaller, and they are uh, closer uh, to the elected officials. They're able to attend meetings. They're able to uh, have influence over the decision making and deliberations of local government officials. Many significant functions of government are performed by local, unelected, volunteer citizens. They do this by serving on boards and commissions, such as the Civil Service Commission and the Planning Commission and the Zoning Hearing Board. So what's the lesson that this, the government is the people? If the government is the people, then the will of the people must be respected. There is a popular phrase today that American voters should vote to take back our government. How can the voters take back their government when their government is the people? At every election, the first act of every uh, elected official is to swear an oath. And when they swear that oath, they swear that they will protect, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States. When a government official swears that oath, they need to realize that protecting, obeying, and defending the Constitution of the United States means that you have to accept the, uh, the will of the people in electing all the other leaders. And you have to work with all of the other leaders. Our state and federal government are the people. And we must never let our leaders of those government forget that. Otherwise, we will end up with a dysfunctional government that serves no one and accomplishes little. Here's another characteristic of uh, government. There's a close, often personal connection between the people and their elected officials. In every municipality, the local elected official is your neighbor. And you will see them in the, in the 
uh, store, in the church, in uh, a park, and you will be able to engage them directly in conversation. When a citizen wants to contact a local uh, representative, they can do so by uh, looking for them in the community and having some interaction with them. In a democracy, that relationship is very, very important. So what's the lesson of this characteristic? We must maintain the connections between the state and federal representatives and their constituents through communication. When we send our representatives to Washington, D.C. and to Harrisburg, they are not in our sight. And we must always try to have them stay in our, in our sight. Otherwise, they will be influenced by party leaders, by large campaign contributors, and by political action committees. So just as citizens bring their concerns to their municipal uh, officials, when they see them in the community at meetings and at, uh, in other places, so the same citizens need to go to the state and federal officials, have direct communication with them, communicate their concerns and their desires, so that we can have the same type of government that we have at the local level. Characteristic three, the primary responsibility, primary activities of government is to provide services that the citizens cannot provide themselves. There's clearly, this is clearly evident at the local level. The primary purpose of local government is to provide services to the people that relate to the use and enjoyment of their property. So services include police protection, fire services, road maintenance, uh, snow removal, garbage collection, and uh, emergency medical services. Many municipalities go beyond these services, and they provide community, community amenities, such as a library, parks, and a, uh, a pool, swimming pool. So what's the lesson here? The responsibility to provide services applies to all levels of government. Today the world is very different than when our forefathers uh, settled our country. We are technologically, economically, and socially connected to people all around the world. Often we compete with them for advantage. Only a strong national government is able to to adequately address the issues that our entire nation faces through this interconnectedness of the modern world. To be sure, the private sector does have a role to play in our growth and development of our country, but it is not a substitute for the national government. The call to less government is a call to deny citizens the services that they cannot provide themselves. Characteristic four, local governments understand the uh, relationship between municipal services and taxes. In the year 2004, several circumstances placed Whitehall Borough in a position where shrinking revenues increased costs and reduced uh, government reserves threatened council's ability to be able to maintain services and balance the budget. The elected officials made the difficult decision to raise taxes 91 percent, explaining to the residents that their reason for doing so because the residents understood that their elected officials were acting in the interest, community interest, and they understood that the reality is, is that services cost money. 
none of those elected officials lost their positions in the next election. So what's the lesson to this? Taxes are the means by which government provides services. Congress and the General Assembly of Pennsylvania need to understand the principle that government exists to provide services for the people that the people are unable to provide for themselves. And taxes and similar type of revenues pay for those services. Those who hold public office, who demonize taxes, who make a pledge that uh, they will not raise taxes, do not serve the people at all. The Boston Tea Party was not an anti-tax revolt. It was a revolt against taxation without representation. Characteristic five, local government provides services using a model that is businesslike and nonpartisan. The decisions that are made by local governments are usually based upon the needs of those governments. Paving a road, building a park, hiring a police officer. These are not Democrat issues. They're not Republican issues. These are not liberal issues. They're not conservative issues. These are community and neighborhood issues. Now, this does not mean that an individual uh, council people do not have some differences of opinion over the providing of, of services. But what it means is that they use a paradigm of what's in the best interest of the community to resolve those differences of opinion. So what's the lesson from this? Sorry. Okay, focusing on common ground set of differences fosters consensus, compromise, and conflict resolution leading to progress. Corporate America would fail to function if decisions were made on the basis of the political affiliations of the management teams. Labeling individuals based on party affiliation, philosophy, religion are barriers to compromise, communication, and conflict resolution. And therefore, the focus of legislative bodies should be on the talents and skills and experiences of their individual members and so that they can then harness the, what the ta these talents and skills to produce legislation for the common good. In conclusion, we have all observed situations in which we believe that the state or federal government has failed us. We have seen gridlock We've seen uh, stalemates. We've seen refusal to act in accordance with law. This happens much less frequently in local government, and it never happens in Whitehall Borough. And I believe this is so because of the five fundamental characteristics that, if applied to the state and federal governments, would improve our system of government at all levels overall. Let us never forget, in the words of uh, Franklin Dell Roosevelt, let us never forget that government is ourselves and not an alien power over us. The ultimate rulers of our democracy are not a president and congressmen and senators and uh, government officials, but the voters of this country. Thank you very much for your time and attention.